What an awesome time. Do I have a witness here? What an awesome time. My mama, God is faithful. Hallelujah. No wonder why the Bible says. <laughs> I don't want to break protocol because it's boiling in me. Let me follow protocol. Hallelujah. First of all, I want to be grateful to God for the salvation of my soul. Hallelujah. And I want to be grateful to God for my daddy and my mommy. Bishop James H. M. Corner, the president and founder of Concern and the brain behind Breakthrough Center. Breakthrough member, I'm calling the papa of this house. You know they clap your hands. You just sit down. Honor my father. Honor my daddy. Daddy, can you please stand? If I don't honor you, and your body walks in here, Bishop says it's an arrow. I must honor you. If I'm going to honor your body, clap your hands for my father. This is the man that God used, that the anointing upon my life is because of him. Hallelujah. Clap for my father. Clap for him. Hallelujah. God bless me with a wonderful father and mother. Growing up, I wonder why Bishop they, they, they were so selfless. But as time grew back, I understood it. Paul said, when I was a child, I acted as a child. When I became a man, I lied down childhood. That means every no pure spirit lie down. I also want to be grateful to God for all the servants of God in the house. Mama, I salute you, ma. Amen. The bishop apostle, the man that God used Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If you are here, let me hear your voice. If you know how God moves. Bishop, can you please stand? Can you stand? Let them see the oracle of God. Liba ba 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 ba. Sir, you say you are going to bring mama. Is this mama? Mama, can you please stand? Liba dos kababa. We salute you, sir. We salute you, sir. Hallelujah. Ministry demands that you honor those that are ahead of you. Because if you want to go ahead and you don't honor those that are ahead of you, you are not going anywhere. Hallelujah. So I honor all my fathers and my mothers. Mommy, I love you. I salute you. My beloved brother, wife. My brother, love, my brother, not here for all the miss more flower. His beautiful wife. And my, my brother. God bless you. My sister. We grew up together. Honor daddy and mommy. She's now a pastor also. Pastor Emil. I remember back in the day, her guy used to be longer than her saying, I'm of the Lord. Hallelujah. But you see, everything Bishop Connor and Mama Connor have taught came out productive. Says, here come. I won't preach long. Says, here come. This is my baby brother. I love him so much. But there is a distinction in him now. Amen. He's not, he's not just sincere anymore. You see him facing my glory. <laughs> He's now prophet sincere. The man that breakthrough has to know ahead of time. The man that spoke God said and it came to pass. From Shiloh till now. Testimonies are in line. He's a product of the bishop. Stand up for my father in the Lord. Stand up for my father. Clap your hands and give God the glory for his life. When, <laughs> hallelujah, sinner. Hallelujah. This morning, you know, I've been excited to preach, but phobia wanted to catch me. Man of God, you can be preaching for many years, but there's a particular scenario they will tell you, say you have to function there. You'll be like, what's going on? What's going on? And you don't even know what to say. Like Bishop can say, where they do that at? Hallelujah. And then my brothers gather 
the ginger maswaga. They say the Lord will use you. Go. Hallelujah. But I want to extend on the topic that Bishop has been speaking on for the past three days, and which is the theme of this year's Thanksgiving of 12 years the faithfulness of God. I've got it to understand as I was reading the Bible and because of the anointing and the notes I took Bishop Farah said and I wrote down and I quote the faithfulness of God is God's character and his nature to be faithful is God's character and his nature he is consistent in his faithfulness he never fail even when you have failed when you have given up God still remains faithful on Christ the solid rock I stand all oh, the grounds are sinking sand God remains faithful you see when there are doubts in your mind God remains faithful how do I know that the Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel and Anna after Shiloh after the celebration they were still calling her name Bible says she ran to the altar and she said you've been faithful yesterday you've been faithful today you can be faithful to mother today my name that they call me change it my God the faithfulness of God <laughs> the preacher also said he said in order to celebrate God's faithfulness we need to always remember where we where God brought us from right pastor where God what? brought us from. how can you be grateful if you don't know where he brought you from but listen to the, the other side of it even when you don't remember, even when you want to act like you are forgotten, God still faithful. Oh, you're too psychedelic, Abby. Huh? You're too psychedelic. Some of us, I remember, before we could come to America, we made vows on altars. We, we, we go on no tarry by first tarry. We saw different places. We pray and make vows. By the time we came to America, the faithfulness became slacking. But God is still faithful because he gave you that job. You still got that life. He still gave you a roof over your head. Bishop, God is faithful. I'm trying to just summarize everything because we kept you here a bit too long, right? Right? Okay, that's good. To be faithful means to be reliable. To be reliable. <laughs> Man of God, are you reliable? I can point to people here that I know that are reliable because when the storm comes you're still standing firm no matter what the devil throws at you you're still standing firm Shalom Hagasseh my mother and my father you don't know the story but because of what you see you have gossiped them tear them apart you say you don't like them because the way they are God is still faithful some of you thought break you would have closed but God is still faithful he don't need my confirmation he don't need your confirmation God is still faithful he needs you to be reliable Father God, God bless you. Because this morning I woke up at four and I said, Lord, if that's what you want me to preach, give it to me. He said, listen to Tuesday's message I mean, and start Friday's message. And I began to listen to it. And the Lord said, listen and take points. I am not faithful because somebody needs me to be faithful. I'm not faithful because of your selfish reason. I am faithful because I am the I am and that I am. Should I tell you something, man of God? Abraham, 
He said, leave your father and your mother and follow me. Abraham said the pagan God before them. He was from a family that said the pagan God. But when the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob spoke, he left all he did and he followed. For so many years, he didn't have a child. The wife said, why not sleep with Hagar? so you can give us a child maybe that is how God is talking about it maybe God wants to give us a, a promise through the seven girl faithfulness the sinner God was still faithful the Bible say in the heat of the day Abraham was sitting at the entrance of his tent Bible said from a distance he saw three men coming his way Pyrethenta he was there glorifying God for transforming his story he was there remembering where God took him from and said you are the reason why I sing you are the lifter of my hands and then the Lord sent three men and Bible said as he saw them from the distance he ran to them the only way the miracle comes you can't be seated God is faithful, but it doesn't mean that he will put it in your hand. You need to stand up. Mommy, when he ran to them, he bowed before them. I'm quoting the Bible. And after he bowed, they said, we came to your house. The Bible says, as they were given, thou said the Lord. The Bible says, Sarah laughed. You opened my eyes. You said, don't be angry with Job's wife. Neither should we be angry with Sarah. Because there are conditions that make you to say, God, I know you exist, but maybe it's not my portion to have this. So when Sarah heard it, she laughed. Not that she didn't know that God is the same God of yesterday, man of God. But she has passed everything physically. Physically, she has passed. Physicians, medical doctors, check her in and out. And they say, it's not possible. Check, give up and go. But like the songwriter says, I will hold my peace until. And so Bible said, Abraham told them to prepare bread. Bring the fresh milk up. Everything should be fresh. And after they fill the servants of God's belly, if you don't praise, God cannot release. So what happened, Bishop? Then, before they were about to leave, he said, wait, I have something to say. This is the purpose I came for. By this time next year, <laughs> that's prophecy here right there, with no trimming of mouth. By this time next year, Thou say of the Lord, you will have a child. Abraham, because listen, they don't go to Sarah. They went to Abraham. They know they have gone to Sarah. She's a woman. She's the carrier. She was the one that was going to carry the child. Biblically, everything was going to say, not possible. You yourself, you know. She would have given so many medical excuses. In fact, physical excuses would have confirmed that what she's saying is true. But they went to Abraham because from the beginning, his attitude was only on one thing. The faithfulness of God. And so what happened? By the time, guess what, men of God? I perceive Abraham was expecting it. And after they said to Abraham, then he said, but you can't just go let out. You got to do something now. What? Every time an angel of God appears, he does not leave you the same way. He add an extra distinction on the grace to be announced. Sir, you can go sit down, sir. Thank you, sir. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. To remember God's faithfulness, you need to understand sacrifice. You need to understand sacrifice. A lot of you and a lot of us don't want to be to go through anything suffering. By the time you your, your car notice oh, hey God, rent oh, hey God. That me, yo, I pay my tithe, I pay my offering. You don't pay it, you pay it. God is faithful. Small problem. Hey, God, by the time you in the church, small thing happen. You want to leave the church. But that is why God has been faithful to you. 
You are living chasing another place. God. You understand what I'm saying? When you are willing to sacrifice, it is no longer I that live it, but Christ who liveth in me. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things, not some things. Through Christ, not by my strength, not by my neighbors, not by my generation, not by my father's name, but through Christ. When you go going through some of the sacrifices, Bishop, you all know what I'm talking about. People ridicule you. Write you down. Say all kind of things about you. Even the ones you so trust, your trusted confidant, they are the one that they want to say, choo choo choo, cha cha cha, chee But you are standing firm. You are waiting. You say, God, you call me. You took me from the dungeons. You gave me a better name. I am not that same person. I know this is for a reason. Whatever it's for, vindicate me. Sacrifice is not just trials. Sacrifice me. You also have to leave your comfort zone. It doesn't have to be comfortable. You don't have to want to go there. You don't have to want to do this or do that. But because it's that say the law, you must do it. Being a pastor for almost 20 years, some members will insult you, Google. After a while, they'll come to say, Man of God, please pray for me. They have not said sorry though. They said, Man, well, please pray for me. I'm going through the problem. I beg you. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. I want to pause a bit. I want you to clap for my beautiful mommy. Clap for my mother. Clap for my mother. Hey! I love you so much, mommy. Before I continue, let me just inject. 1996, I was a way watcher. That's all I come. One morning after prayer, the anointing you see functioning today is because of mommy. Preaching today, everybody gave up on me. She said, don't try it. So I swallow it. After prayer, she said, knee down. Oh yeah, now. She said, You, you will do God's work. Others' back character will die. Every negative thing they say about you will not come to pass. You will do the Lord's work. She pulled all on my head. I was first man of God. Stand up. I said, Who did he pray? Because we used to pray. No food in the house. We pray. She's sowing night and day. We stay praying. And then that time, Hungry swing in the morning. After she pulled it over, man, I don't know what came over me. I went outside to the tea junction we are. I started preaching. But I'm in no power. But here I am today because of somebody's sacrifice and consistent trust. Every country I went to, I called and said, Hey, boy, what are you doing in that country? To remember God's faithfulness, you need to understand sacrifices. God respects sacrifices so much, right? When they say can't work, if you see nobody in the church not coming, by the time you see the, the, the phone of the church, you, you acting like you're the more basic person. I want to run up. I want to run up. Hebrews chapter 10. Bible Bible Kilo Shele. My son, you Hebrews 10 23. Man of God, you know you quoted it, right? I'm coming there. I got two scriptures. I say everything I did when I prepare myself for mommy. After Thursday, I say no. This one is fat my glorious. The people of God need to understand what are you pray, what are your attitude, what are everything you do, God is still faithful. If God was me, the ground was going to open and swallow you because some of you, your character is not worth in your life. 
the faithfulness of God. If God had to ask permission from somebody for mommy to celebrate 60th today, they would say, I beg you, yeah. That woman, we can do this. <laughs> we can do that. With all the love she tries to portray in her little weak ways. Mommy dancing when she go home. Ah, me and daddy can be laughing. Ah. With all the, the deals, she will stay pray and be on her knee. Personally, God bless these people. Then you'll still see her smile and say, the way the woman can ah. Are you there, man of God? Read. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Yes, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Man of God, read again. Hebrews 10, 23. Mm -hmm. Let us hold fast. Let us what? Hold what? Fast. Hold it tight. Hold it very tight. Don't let nobody be the reason why if you stagger. Don't let nobody be the reason why you will doubt God. Don't let nobody be the reason why you will deny God. Hold fast. Why? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. The that confession. The profession of our confession, right, Bishop? The Bishop no bogus, so I got to ask him. <laughs> if you say God is good, no matter what comes your way, God is still good. Even when people see that God is not good, God is still good. They tell you about you can't give it now, God is still good. Pray your door need to close, God is still good. Why you stay down and no human being there? God is still good. The faithfulness of God. Hey! My God. My God, my God. My God. I'm trying to wrap it so I won't jump over something. Hallelujah. Hey. Where are you going? Mark chapter 10. Listen, I see him on video. Man of God. Blind Bartimaeus for 37 years was seated in one position. Guess what? He got so familiar with the terrain that he was telling coaching people how to be prepared for the miracle. So that poverty has endowed into your system that you become an advisor of the people. How did you leave poverty? 37 years, this man sat there. And God, Jesus said, it is not a sin of his mother or his father, not because of him, but so that the name of the Lord, some situation you are going through, is just so God can be glorified. <laughs> hey God. Hebrews 11, 11. I want to close. Why the man of God looking for that one? David. The Bible says, and David's father sent him in 1 Samuel from verse 17. When the father says, Oh, the fool, David got there. He saw giants fighting, no experience in war. And when David got there, he saw a big man. But there was a difference between the Israelites and the Philistines. And David was the only one in the crowd that understood that difference. He said, How there is he to come and insult the children of the living God. What will be given to the person that will kill this man? Listen to this. So discouraging. The bishop said, Goliath had been fighting the devil, saying he was born. Right? David never knew anything, but David had killed the bear. He killed the lion. He was able to rescue the sheep. But there was one thing David kept on. He was ready for sacrifice. He was consistent in the promises of God because he understood the faithfulness of God. I'm about to close here. I think I will end with this. They are close. If you read Luke, in Luke chapter 17, there's a story I love so much from verse 11 to 19. It talks about the ten lepers. When Jesus was passing, they were yelling, Oh, oh Jesus, Nazareth, come, remember all I got so on my teeth. My Bible hurt me. My other arm like this said, When it's time for trouble, you know where the pastor living. When it's time to gossip, you are the same one that know where the pastor living. You know all about the pastor. You get the best cheese, the negative cheese to gossip about the pastor. Stupid. 
stood. David said, who are you? Only 10. One came back. The reason why you seek servants of God. My daddy and mommy been in ministry 42 years. Now that baby. You didn't have baby? And I am. But be your corner baby. Be your corner now, baby. Hallelujah. And so after all of them got healed, like the way we do, we all run away. We go to the PP churches. Praise the Lord. Because you want to show off your clothes. You see, they were healed. But only one person turned around and said, I got to remember. There was a man that I was calling him. He stopped by. He didn't need to stop by. He was not forced to stop by. But he stopped by. And so I came today to call his name. The Bible says, and he ran to him. And he says, sir. Thank you. Listen to the distinction between him and the others. The nine were healed. The one was whole. The nine they were healed. I mean the sickness they come by any time. But the one, it disappeared completely because of gratitude. As I close, if you will stand up on your feet please. In this open manner, I want to thank God for the grace that I've been under for so many years. Mommy, Daddy, I know you joke and play with me, but I don't take your grace for granted because I'm a living evidence. From 1987 till now, I have seen what God has done in you. I have seen what God has done through you. Some people are carrying their shoulder, all the beach, all the this and that. They don't even want to be identified with where they all came from. But God knows your sacrifice is not in vain. Hallelujah. Today, I want to do something special. Mommy, don't put on your shoe yet. We want to do something special. Let me tell you, church of God, if you don't honor the people that cover you, you cannot honor. What you don't have, you can't give. And what you don't give, you can't receive. Prophet, come, sir. Melago, come. Melago, can you please get my brother's mic? Mommy, please come and sit down. La -da -da -da. This is how I'm closing my sermon today. I'm watching the time, so I have to be fast. Can we surround?